Hey, what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today, gonna do another mid-year top 10. I'm gonna try to knock out one per day. That's gonna cover 12 days of boxing right there, of uh, covering our top 10 fighters. Again, it's, it's gonna be a lot more brief than my um, than my year-end top 10s. Those are usually 20 to 30 minute videos because I do a full breakdown of every fighter from, um, you know, of, in the top 10 of what they did that year and everything. But, you know, these ones are about 10, maybe between 10 and 15 minutes. Today we're discussing the featherweight division, 126, and looking at the top 10 and how it looks uh, heading into the, you know, the second half of the year. Um, I'm not going to talk about anybody that dropped out because really this is just kind of a, a mid-year top 10. I think that year-end top 10 is really the, the one that matters. So let's jump right into it. We'll start with, excuse me. We'll start with my two two way a two way tie for ten, and the first of those is Eduardo Ramirez, who was already tied for ten. He stayed busy, got a win. PBC guy, no real direction right now on what he's going to do next. I know he's trying to move up the ladder. PBC doesn't really have a lot of big names in this division, so we'll see what he gets. But I'm hoping he gets something decent. I do like Ramirez. I like his style. I like the year he had last year. So see what happens with him. Tied with him for 10th, dropping one spot from number 9 is Joette Gonzalez, former world title challenger. Um, Gonzalez uh, just, you know, he he uh, got a win, you know, as you know, last year. I don't think he's fought since that win over uh, Miguel Mariaga um, last, um, last year. So, just waiting to see what he does in his next fight. Um, number 9, dropping one spot from number 8 is former... Uh, junior featherweight champ at 122 and that is uh shit drawing a blank here that is um uh, jesse magdaleno magdaleno um again another guy who hasn't fought at all this year really stayed away and stayed out of uh really any big fights last year he didn't like the money that he was being offered for emmanuel navarate so and that was a mandatory title fight so i'm hoping he is um a little more ready. Maybe he'll fight Navarrete. I would love to see those two guys get it on. Um, but we'll see what happens. I mean, um, I haven't really heard much out of him. Number eight, dropping one spot for number seven, is former junior featherweight champion Isaac Dogbay. Isaac Dogbay just came back, um, I believe, in June. And he took on uh, Adam Lopez, who's a very legit uh, featherweight. And it was a good fight. He ended up winning a very close majority decision in that one to stay... Um, undefeated at featherweight you know which puts him at 2-0 now he's won both his fights at featherweight uh he wants to get Navarrete a third time not sure if that's going to work out for him but we'll see I mean I'd love to see the fight number seven dropping one spot from six is Tuxco Nyambayar Nyambayar the former world title challenger lost his first fight to Gary Russell in 2020 um you know had a rocky bounce back fight in September almost got upset well he, on two weeks notice he took a fight with Chris Colbert at 130 pounds and moved up in weight to fight a very good boxer in Chris Colbert at 130. And, you know, no surprise, he got cleanly outboxed and outclassed. That was just uh, on the 5th right there of July. So, you know, I mean, Nyambayar, I think it can be an effective fighter at 126 and a good solid featherweight. But, you know, he needs to um, come back down to this weight. I think he will. I think that was kind of like a last-minute thing. He wanted to take the challenge, see how he would do. He got beat, so come back down to the division that has worked for him, and I think that's what he will end up doing. Number six, Can Shu of China. Now, I just heard that there's a good chance he's going to be fighting a, a Lei Wood or Lee Wood on um, on July 31st for uh, defending his title finally after what's going to be a 20 month layoff by the time they get in the ring, over 20 months off. So. I'm hoping Shu Can or Can Shu comes back ready to fire and get himself back in the mix because I do like this guy a lot and I want to see him get back to the top five. Number five is Kid Galahad, the former world title challenger. He drops two spots from number three, but don't let that fool you. It's only because other guys did stuff earlier in the year and our champs are higher up. Galahad is fighting Jazza Dickens in August in a rematch from their 2012-13 bout that uh, he ended up stopping Dickens. Galahad's fighting for the vacant IBF title in that fight. If he wins, he's moving right back in, uh, up into possibly the top three with a victory. So, um, 
you know, he had a split decision against Josh Warrington, bounced back from that in a major way and knocked out Claudio Marrero last year. Um, he and Warrington did not want to fight him in there. He didn't want to fight him in there, um, you know, in a rematch, which was a mandatory fight. So now he has a little bit of credit to call some shots. And I think he's going to when, uh, you know, after the Dickens fight. But I got him beating Dickens convincingly and becoming a world champion for his first time. Number four, and staying number four, is the reigning WBO champion, Emmanuel Navarrete. He took on a tough test in Christopher Diaz uh, um, earlier this year, and he dominated, in my opinion, Christopher Diaz. Just absolutely beat him and beat him to the punch and was uh, very effective in that fight. He knocked him down a few times. Diaz is a, is a brawler, though. That guy comes to fight, but he was, um, Navarrete was so on point. To him. In my opinion, it's the best he's looked since beating Isaac Dogbe. It was his biggest test since the Dogbe fights, and he passed it with flying colors. So I'm hoping he gets one of the other top-ranked guys in the ring. Um, I would I would hope for a fight with uh, Jesse Magdaleno first um, and make Isaac Dogbe earn a third fight with him, considering he convincingly beat Dogbe both times the first two fights. But we'll see. I mean, I just want to see him get back in the ring. He's very entertaining. I like Navarrete. Number three, dropping one spot for number two is Josh Warrington. Warrington had that tough loss to um, Mauricio Lara. He got knocked out in the ninth round and just got beat up in that fight. Well, he gets a chance to prove that if that was a fluke or not. September, he's fighting Mauricio Lara in a rematch. And we're going to see where Josh Warrington is in that fight. Personally, he got his ass beat against uh, um, Lara. And I'm picking Lara to beat him again in a rematch. But... I wouldn't be surprised if Warrington pulls it off. But that's September, Warrington versus Lara. Number two right now is Mauricio Lara for that upset. You know, Josh Warrington was the second best fighter at 126 when, when they fought. And he absolutely dominated him and beat his ass. So impressive ass performance out, out of uh, Warrington. Uh, I mean, out of Lara over Warrington. They're rematching. He gets a chance to prove it was no doubt. And that's only going to cement himself even more. I think he's going to beat Warrington in a rematch, personally, but I wouldn't be surprised if Warrington pulls it off. But we're going to see how good Mauricio Lara really is come September when he gets the rematch with Warrington. And then still number one is the reigning WBC champion, Gary Russell Jr. Um, it was announced that Russell, we thought at the beginning of the year that he was going to be moving up in weight. Then it was announced that the WBC ordered him to fight the undefeated Ray Vargas, who was coming up from 122. It's a mandatory fight. The fight has been agreed upon, but we haven't got a date on it yet. Gary Russell hasn't fought since February of last year. You know, he, he always fights once a year, but a lot of times he at least fights by May. And I haven't heard shit about Gary Russell and what he's doing. I do believe he is still going to fight Ray Vargas, and that's a big fight right there. But we haven't heard or seen anything. I'm hoping we hear something very soon and we can get these guys in the ring because it is, a, fu it is a, a fun, interesting fight. So... Excuse me. So that's it. So far this year, if I had to pick a featherweight of the year, it would absolutely have to be Mauricio Lara for his dominant performance over Josh Warrington. But we'll see who ends up pulling it out in their rematch. We'll see who ends up stepping up and taking this division over possibly before the end of the year. And we'll see if Gary Russell and Ray Vargas get it on. And if uh, that ends up being a little rivalry right there, because I really think Vargas has the tools to compete with Gary Russell. So we'll see. All right, guys, that's it. That's the mid-year top 10 on the 126-pound featherweight division. I hope you guys enjoyed it. True boxing, you've been hit with the truth.